All right, hello and welcome back. All right, so we've uh, gone through all of our uh, photo textures and we've processed all of them. Um, we've done a little bit of resizing. Um, we've removed branding from our storefronts. Uh, now we're going to go back to our, uh, our city scene and we're going to start to apply those textures uh, throughout. Now, um, this may not be that big of a concern if you're using um, a 3D render, uh, but with Photoshop, one thing that, that might be helpful um, is to sort of remove some of these foreground elements and, so that you can sort of get in and do the, the surgery that you need to do, the art surgery that you need to do on these, on these buildings. Um, you're going to need to go in at some point here and just sort of uh, uh, maybe turn, on, turn lines on and off or uh, have access uh, to uh, the fronts of these buildings. You know, if you're using 3D and you, you know, drag something like this over here, um, you know, one thing that you can do is you can use what's called layer masking. Uh, I think we've used it in, uh, like, on our sword for our character, uh, in our character project. But uh, just a quick refresher, if you add a layer mask, uh, it will, by default, add this little uh, sort of um, rectangle off to the side which represents your layer and that rectangle is either uh, is, is by default it is it is white um, remember white and black have to do with opacity in Photoshop uh, when it comes to masking so one of the things that you can do is like say if I needed to have this street pole go through here I'll reduce the opacity on this layer just a little bit to show you um, I would change my color to black right and I could paint out the section where that street pole was, right? It basically acts like an eraser, um, but if you make a mistake, the nice thing is that you can go back in with a white color and bring everything, you know, back. Right. I'm just gonna disable this layer mask and then I'm going to delete that layer mask. Okay, um, so if you're using 3D, that's probably a process that you're going to want to think about using. Uh, if you're not using 3D, um, one of the nice things about using Photoshop to create your scene is that you can just turn off all of the elements that you don't want, presumably. Uh, presumably they're all in different layers. Presumably you have uh, smartly named all of them uh, so that you can easily find them and turn them on and off. Um, what I'm trying to do here is just, again, kind of clean everything up a little bit uh, so that I have access to, um, to my buildings so that I can add to them um, uh, with, my, with my photo texturing um, and not really have to worry about, you know, uh, the trees and stuff like that. Okay, uh, so when it comes to doing your photo texturing, um, Order of operations is kind of helpful. Um, I'm really going to just kind of reduce my painting to just the bare bones of uh, lighting and just the bare bones of where everything's going to go. Again, you're not going to need to worry necessarily about all of uh, your windows looking exactly right or your storefronts looking exactly right. That's what the photo textures are for. Um, my recommendation, um, if you're doing photo texturing, is to begin uh, with your foreground and work your way back. Um, so the part of this building that's closest to the camera is this center, uh, is this is this line right here on this corner. So I'm going to work all of my details back in space from this one point, um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So for example, um, I want to put the first thing that I want to do before I start putting in bricks and stuff is I want to make sure that I get my um, I want to get my storefronts in first. So I'm just going to uh, alt drag this layer over here, and uh, again I'm going to line everything up to this to this uh, corner line. That's really important. Um, I know that there's at least two uh, shop fronts here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just duplicate this layer and then control E 
just like we had these sort of flattened versions of uh, our windows and our, our building facades, we're going to do the same sort of thing uh, with this stuff. And so what I'll do here is I'll do Edit, Transform, Distort. And if I'm having difficulty seeing what I'm doing, I'm just going to reduce the opacity just a little bit. And this is why getting those perspective lines in just right is so important. Because now I can see exactly where my distortion needs to happen. And then if I increase the opacity, we'll have this. Again, don't worry about these white doors and stuff. These are details that will be uh, fixed up later. Uh, I might actually want this to sort of go around the corner, this facade. So I'm going to grab one more of these from my little pile of Legos over here. Do control T, bring it down so that it is the appropriate height as it would be on the corner, and then I'm going to work my way back from the corner. Transform, distort. Right, and we just want to make sure that the architecture aligns properly. Don't worry about this other stuff that's over here. Uh, re remember, like, this is sort of your, this is all a pass on uh, what we're putting together. The, the line work is only temporary. It's just really kind of there as a guide. Um, if I want to remember that this is a little bit darker, what I can go do is image adjust uh, levels. Uh, and I can adjust my levels so that they're a little bit darker for this side of the building, uh, if that's important to me right now. Right? Then I would go and I would grab, uh, let's go over to my forge here, and let's grab some windows. Let's grab some windows. Um, so let's take this guy here. Um, when I begin to add my windows in, I want to make sure that I'm doing so, again, from this corner, where everything is closest to me. I can see that I have three sets of windows, so I'm just actually gonna take this window and duplicate it out three times. And then I will go Edit, Transform, Distort. And we'll make sure that the bottoms of these windows are properly aligned. So when you're getting stuff aligned in your geometry here, remember to align it to your line work. And remember that you, all of your line work is aligned to uh, ostensibly some vanishing points that are way off to either side here. Right? So your windows are going to go in like this. Um, you can't just pull these up, right? You may want to make, if you know there's going to be two stories, you may want to do something like that. Edit, transform, distort. And you just distort it and put it in the box. Again, don't worry about that line work behind. If the line work proves to be a little distracting, uh, just go ahead and select the layer that it's on. And just reduce the opacity of it and that'll just give you a hint of where things were. I'm looking at this window, it does not look right. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this again. Let's do this layer first. Right, remember that the photo imagery that you're using might also be slightly distorted and you might need to compensate for that um, with your line distortion, uh, with, your, uh, with your image distortion.
and we're just going to sort of eyeball it and make sure that our windows are roughly the same height, that they're aligned properly. And if you're worried, you know, do get in close. Right. Uh, and then you would do that for all of the windows. Uh, let's do um, our bricks. Let's go back over here. Once we have some of the major elements in here, we now have something that we can use for scale on our bricks. So when we select our, our brick sheet over here, we'll just drag it, drag a copy over here, and we will control T. We wanna make sure again, as we look at this corner, do these bricks look like they are the right size, right? We don't want them too small uh, because that will look wrong, and nor do we want them, you know, way too big. Right, this we're not making the pyramids here, so we want we want something that is appropriately scaled, and this looks about right. Maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, um, and then with our bricks, uh, we'll do sort of the same thing here. We will align to an edge, edit, transform, distort. We can also set this to overlay. Uh, remember, we're not doing this. These aren't going to the edges of the frame here. They're going beyond. So we need to make sure that all of our bricks, if we, uh, if we go in here, they're all aligned to the architecture correctly. That looks about right to me, right? So um, yeah, if you set this to overlay, you'll notice that you have a nice uh, brick texture to work with. Uh, you would do the same thing as many times as you need to on these buildings. Right, make sure you go right up to the other bricks that you have. Make sure that the scale is uh, about right. As I look at these bricks, it appears that they are about the correct scale. So I'm going to pull this guy up a little bit, edit, transform, distort, overlay. And this is what I would do with all of my textures. Now, if you end up having, um, uh, you're gonna definitely wanna remember order of operations here. As you can see, this brick texture is over our windows. We don't want that. Uh, so we're going to pull that back behind. Uh, we can also see that there are certain, maybe architectural ledges and stuff. Uh, one of the things that we can do then is again, use our layer mask and we can just draw spaces for those details. Right, if we have little bits like this, just draw into that. Right, um, so you would do that uh, with the entire scene, you would do that with the road and the sidewalk, and really all we want to do is we want to make sure that we've got um, just the the broad strokes covered. We're not worried about details yet, we're not worried about billboards or signage yet. Um, we're just trying to make sure 
that sort of the broad strokes are figured out. Um, so you would do that with uh, with everything in your scene. Um, I've gone ahead and done a little bit of, of uh, mixing here with my different brick textures. Um, and I've added in a couple of uh, textures for the roadway. You can see I added the texture in for the background. I've just gone to filter, Gaussian blur, and right, you can you can add in uh, whatever blur you find appropriate. Uh, you'll see that I didn't take out my line work entirely. Uh, I'm not quite done with it yet, um, but I am go I'm going to leave it in place um, just to sort of remind me that I would like to add in some some additional architectural details. Uh, I've changed a couple of things here. I've changed my billboard so that it's now just a uh, flat painted brick. And I'll go in later and I will fix up uh, these windows down here uh, when we do a detail pass. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you can see how we've gone from something that looks kind of cartoony um, to something that looks a bit f more photoreal. Uh, and we'll blend this all together with uh, a bit of paint. Uh, we'll add some details in. Uh, it's going to look uh, just just fine. Uh, it'll look very nice uh, by the time we're done with it. Um, so probably a couple more videos from now, we'll start adding in color and detail. Um, but we'll finish we'll finish up the detailing with painting uh, the next time we pick this up. Thanks for paying attention.